Hello everyone, um, I'm making another video uh, regarding uh, the six constant mitzvot. Uh, yes, this is a foundation, and we're, it's the Ramchal Zirot side, and it's all about foundation. And the Ramchal says in the beginning of Mr. Shaim, the more something is fundamental, the more you're going to forget about it. Everybody, know, everybody knows about it. The sadness is that sometimes people don't even know the basic to get to know the foundation or the basic of the foundations. So a lot of people heard about six constant mitzvot. If I ask you right now, what are the six constant mitzvot? Do you know it? I'm not sure. Or if you know, you might not know them in order. Or it has to be like that. So what's the problem? The problem is the most important we forget. It is one of the six. I mean, it is. From why we have 613 commandments. Out of the 613 commandments, six mitzvot are supposed to be done. Six commandments are meant to be done every second of your life. So how come you don't know them? Those are the most important. We know something that comes all the time are the most important. So how come you don't know those six constant mitzvot? You're going to search and maybe these. That. Most people that I ask, religious, non religious, they all get it wrong. How is that possible? It's the foundation. It's the beginning of uh, uh, Sefer Achinuch. You have to know them. That's the way you can be face to face to God with God. As we know, that's the Chavetz Chaim says in Mishnah Bura, Be'er the first siman of the Shulchan Aruch, the right the beginning of the Shulchan Aruch. It doesn't come like in the middle of something. It's the foundation, beginning of all the Torah. Right? How do I achieve Shivis Yashar and Ditamid by doing those six constant mitzvot? If I do those mitzvot, Hashem is with me always. So, don't you want to be with Hashem always? So, let's do it. What are the six constant mitzvot? Let's review. Okay? Number one, to know there is a God. Number two, to know that there is no other power than God. Number three, the number two is like, uh, right, those two are the first two commandments of the Ten Commandments. Okay? So, that's how you can remember. First two of the Ten Commandments are the two first. Number three, Yichud Hashem, that God is one. That you say when you say Shema, Hashem, Shema Yisrael, Hashem, Kone Hashem Echad. God is one. Number four, that you have to love God. It's a mitzvah to love God. Number five, to be in awe of God, not to fear God. Fear is just the beginning of awe, but it's the lowest level. So not fear, but awe of God. And number six, not to go after your heart and eyes desire. We say, right? We say in the Shema. They're all actually in the Shema. When Shema, you say Shema Israel, and the Shema, they're all in the words there. The whole thing there, they ha you can remember very easily the six, the six constant mitzvot. They, they have to be applicable there for sure during Shema. Okay, so but, well, the question, how do we do all six mitzvot in the same time? Okay, I do mitzvot, I'm done. No, those one you're never done. You have to do every second. So, because it basically it's like that. First of all, let's understand very quickly. To the difference between the first, I mean, lots of people get mixed between the first three. The first one to know there's a God that means I have to be aware and convinced that God is here with me, that He's, he's um, he, there's a creator, there is God, there is a source. He's, he's the source of all energy. I'm alive now, I'm breathing, I'm thinking just because God, um, they, they, He created me. He's, okay, so there is a God, He's the source of every. Thing. Now, number two, there is no other God. No other God means, it's not that only that there is a source, there is a creator, and He exists, His existence is, is also that there is no other power than Him. He is the only source of all energy, right? Nothing else. Number three, to know that God is one. What's to know that God is one? It means that Everything is connected. Not only he's not just like he created the world and he led the world on um, uh, on battery, automatic battery, and now he's um, he left, like a lot of people say. Uh, he's abandoned us, right? This is absurd. So the idea is 
that he's involved in everything that's happening in the world. Remember, his story is his story. That's what his story is. So God is involved in everything, in the darkness, in the light. It's part of a system and he, he decides when to show himself or not, to reveal himself. But even the darkness, even the physical is all connected to God. God is involved in everything. Um, that's the Yehud Hashem. Um, Hashem is present in everything, S uh, actively involved with everything. Okay, now then we have love of Hashem. That's pretty easy. You have to be constantly in a state of loving Hashem. Everything you do, it should be out of love. Should be, if you do, it should be close to Hashem because you love Him because He loves you. And then to be in awe of Hashem is to realize that if He's really here, then I have to really, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to put my finger in my nose if I'm in front of God, in front of the King of Kings. So we have to act. You have to live it. Feel. If you're in front of a king, you're going to behave differently. So feel it. Make it real. Act it out. Fake it till you make it. Till you become it. And then we have number six, not to go after your heart as desire. Because at the end, that's your challenge. Every second you challenge the desire is trying to kill you, says the Lord Sages. Every second you have a challenge of Am I going closer to God or further away from God? Don't let your eyes or your this heart, this, we have desires all the time. We see things and we want things. Control yourself, direct yourself towards the good. So that's the six. So whatever you're going to do, you have to think about the thing. So I always like to take the example of an apple eat, or eating something like an apple or no matter what we do, you have to do all the time. So no matter what you do, you have to experience it's you can it's not just I think of it because you cannot think of six things at the same time but you can become those six things you can reflect those six things meaning when someone sees you he can he should be able to see that you have those six things in you so when someone sees you they know you believe in God when someone sees you they see that you know there's no other power so you thank God for everything you do you're like connected Pray, please Hashem help. Be'ezra Hashem. When you're, uh, 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 they see you, you have to be able, they have to be able to see that you're aware that everything that happens comes from Hashem. Everything, Hashem is involved. And that's like you say, Gamzu Litova. Well, that's a very high level Gamzu Litova, but everything that does, that does, God does is good. That's what we're saying. Uh, you have to. He has to, the person has to be able to see that you're in love with God because everything you do, you do it with love. You, you see, you're connected. You love being, and when you love the world, when you love creation, when you love being human being, you love God. Otherwise, it's fake. And they see also that the way you behave, the way you stand, the way you you speak, you are like a prince in the presence of the king. That's a tough one. We have to tr we have to practice it. Our own rabbi says you have to practice at least when you pray and you learn. That's why some people put a hat when they learn, or they put a, they they dress up. Technically, the right thing. I know there's some people who actually they dress specially. They have a special. Um, I try that to do. <laughs> I try to do that. It's very hard to do. But basically, you have a suit just for praying. Yeah, you're going to a special private meeting. You're going to meet the president. You're going to put a special suit. Uh, so, but at least that's why a Talmud Chacham, someone who learns, someone who represents God, has, cannot have even a stain on his shirt because it's Elul Hashem. It's like not fulfilling that commandment. It doesn't mean you don't feel you're in the presence of, of God. You're not representing God. Or you, but you're doing it in a disgusting way. So that's... Uh, that's for the being all, and then they have to see that you're controlling your eyes and controlling your desire. You don't get angry, you don't go look at every girl that passes, you don't right, you control all those things. So, that's that's the six. So, let's give an example. I'm eating an apple, or I'm doing something. So, what do I do? I'm about to eat that apple. I know that apple was created by God for me, and I know that the only reason I get energy is not because I'm eating that apple. 
that energy from that apple really comes from God and my soul energy comes from God but God made it that they are intermediaries and I can using that but ultimately the only source of goodness of life force doesn't come from the apple itself it comes from God but I'm aware that this apple is directly connected to God and when I eat it I'm getting energy from God also but from the apple and I'm aware uh, then number three God is one I'm aware that God had created that apple just for me and that God is involved with me and even though it's a physical world and I'm gonna use that to connect to God because that's what God wants being eating an apple also means part of my Avodah Sashem it's also a service of God I'm also connected to the spiritual world it's all one it's all part of the plan And that apple was designed for me from the beginning of creation for me to eat it now to make the world a better place. And then I see that apple is beautiful. He created for me and therefore I'm in love with God. I show God love. I show appreciation. I'm aware of the five senses. I the taste, the color, the beauty, the shape, the pleasure, the satisfaction. All that. I'm in love with God that you give me that gift to be able to eat something so delicious, amazing and to serve you in the same time. It's an opportunity to say I love you. And I'm also in awe of the beauty of the how the shape and how God designed it with colors and uh, uh, the right color red because I know it's right and so many wisdom you can read Rabbi Abigdor Miller on the, the universe testifies, he describes the apple, the wisdom behind it and all, all the beautiful things. So you're in awe with God and you're going to eat it as if you're in front of God. You're sitting at a table with God. You're in the dinner, romantic dinner with your spouse, with God. And you're eating that together. So you're careful how you eat it. Eat it with silverware. Just joking. But uh, you, 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 you could. <laughs> as a French, I used to eat uh, pizza with silverware. Um... Now in America, I got a bit lazy, but I, I try. It's it's more, my rabbi always said, if you're a rabbi, you cannot really eat a hamburger. Or at least, for sure, not in public. Like, you're a prince. Prince don't, don't eat hamburger. They eat pepper steak. They're yeah, nice. But they don't eat hamburger. It's not refined. It's not uh, royal. It's not royal. We have to become royal. Mamleches Kohanim Begol Kadosh. We are a nation of priests, a holy nation you have to play your role it is your responsibility so that's when you eat an apple someone has to see that responsibility in you so you in awe of that apple of that whole thing you're in awe of the fact that that apple you can elevate that apple and that apple can elevate you and that apple can connect yourself to god and that god created that and that everything is made by god you in awe. wow that's amazing look what i'm doing and not only that by eating is to elevate the world through food and sparks of holiness that are hidden in it if you go in kabbalah you're gonna be so in awe and um and uh, and last but not least not to go after your heart and eyes desire. I'm not eating. I'm eating that apple not just because I'm hungry. Not because you know. And you have to eat it because you're hungry. By the way, you cannot just eat just because you see something. You desire it and it's beautiful. I want to eat. No, you have to eat because you're hungry. Everything we do is out of need. That's a very hard level, but we're getting there. So you eat because Hashem. That's the right thing to do. You eat. Uh, organic apple ideally right if we want to do the right thing it's not to eat things that are unhealthy for us i'm talking to myself number one we have to eat things that definitely that are good for us for the world and um i don't go after my heart and i desire i don't eat things just because i um want it or i it looks good looks good yet so I eat because I have a need to th to nourish my body and to come close to God, to have strength, to come close to God, to serve God, to love Him more. So, don't you know that's why your wife cooks you dinner? So that she feeds you and you have strength to give her love and take care of everything? So, same thing. That's why you're eating. Um, to, sh to have the strength to 
bring more love into the world. So here we described just eating an apple, okay? And you have to feel somehow all that. So at the beginning it's hard, yeah, you have to remember, by the way, the, uh, the, the blessing, I put it long, long time in the video, Ba'uch Ata Hashem, Elokeinu Melech HaOlam. Why? This is the blessing before every blessing, when before we eat. Ba'uch Ata Hashem, Elokeinu Melech HaOlam. All those six words that are in every bracha is to remind you that you need to do the six constant mitzvot to do that action perfectly. Uh, so before, that's why blessing your preparation to do the right thing is to remind you of the six constant mitzvot, right? That's why we always say more, and they're in the same order. Baruch, you are the source. God, you're the source of everything. That's uh, Rashi explains Baruch. Ata, you, God, and all the power. You're the only power. There's nothing else. Hashem, Hashem, the halacha is, I say, I say, I say Adonai, but I have in mind Yud Kevavke, meaning everything is connected, everything is to be one, God is here, everything I'm about to do is to bring unity into the world, to reveal God in the world. God is involved with everything. Elokeinu, our God, relationship of love, it's not just the God of everyone, we have a special relation with Him, Elokeinu, He judges us because He loves us, Elokim. Melech, He's the King. You're in awe, you're like in front of the king, to be in awe of him. And Haolam, Haolam means the world, but the Roshoresh is Elem, which is hidden. Hashem is hidden behind everything. It's a, it's a concealed world, and therefore be careful what you look at and desire, because not everything, don't judge its book by its cover. Make sure that it's healthy, make sure that what's inside is good, and then you can uh, use it or run away from it. So. That's what every bracha is for, and it's a reminder when we eat or before we do mitzvah. So, my friends, make sure you review those six. It should be constantly reviewed. You have to, we have to think about it all the time. You're sitting in line anywhere you are, any second of your life, you can be doing a mitzvah. Those mitzvahs are in incredible. They're the most important mitzvot. It says Chavetz Chaim, the reward is incredible for him. We have no idea. And you get just in line, you're driving, you think, you think of us, you think, oh, there's a creator and he loves me and he's here and I love him and I only do what he wants. And at the beginning, it's like driving, actually. You have the mirrors and you have to, you have the clutch um, in Europe and then you, you drive and you have to look and you have to push your gas, put the radio. It's like, wow, it's a lot of things. I don't know if I can focus. Uh, I'm, eh, I'm lost. I'm overwhelmed. Well, yeah, then you're overwhelmed. Then, a few days, mo weeks, months later, you, you, you are driving, you have one eye there, uh, ear on the radio, you're eating your sandwich, you're speaking to the kids, you're looking at the landscape in, all in the same time, you're texting, no texting when you drive. Speaking to myself too. Um, but basically, you do so many things in the same time, it becomes one with you. That's the when my Rebbe explained, based on Rav Noach Weinberg, that's how the mitzvahs of being, you, you are those six mitzvahs. You never stop really doing it. But if you don't think about it, it doesn't work. So work on those six constant mitzvot, foundations of all foundations of the 613 mitzvahs. Every 613 mitzvah helps you those, help you do, increase those six mitzvot, helps you increase to know there is a God, Help, no, uh, helps you understand that there's not the power and that he's one and that you, he loves you and you have to love him back and that he's present and you have to live with him as if he's the king of the world and all that. So every right, every mitzvah helps you stretch that and make it more real. And those six mitzvahs help you do all the other mitzvahs the right way. So may we all be able yeah, just want to say this six mitzvah is a cube, is the physical world. Right? If I create my cube, I'm inside the cube. I'm number seven inside the cube. Right? Six facets. Those are six constant mitzvot. I enter into a cube. My aura, my energy, my cube becomes the reality. So as if you have a six facets of a, like a different screen, movie screen. So you six facets and you connect to those six sides and uh, 
and you enter into that reality, that dimension, and it becomes real. If you work those good on six mitzvahs, you're gonna see things happening. I promise, you're gonna start living in a different reality, in the six six dimension. So may we all work on it, never forget it. May I start an examiner to test you. What are the six months on mitzvot? And you know one of the uh, uh, exciting thing you can do? Ask anyone. What are, what are six months on mitzvot? Oh, I don't know, but are you supposed to do it every second of your life? Uh, yeah. So why you don't know the six months on mitzvot? It's the foundation. So that's way it will push you to remember it. And everybody, if you ask your friend, anyone around you, what are six months on mitzvot? Then, um, then we all finally know it and live it and be with Hashem all the time. Have a wonderful day.